Hey folks, guess who? Are you all like me? Do you sometimes get hamstrung on equipment decisions? I know I do. And sometimes I think, man, I'd just be better off being out there shooting, uh, you know, instead of wasting my time doing all this research on equipment, trying to find the perfect thing. But, you know, equipment a lot of times is, it equates to one of the seven fundamentals of marksmanship, you know, a foundation. If you don't have a good foundation, everything up from there is going to be faulty. You know, you may wind up with a crooked building or your building may cave in or may fall over. So we need good foundations. So recently I was looking at rear bags and I'm going to do a review today on the protector rear bag that I just got. And I'm going to show you why I got that and what, what my thoughts are about it. And we're actually going to do an unboxing today. I know last year, I know last year I said, no, unboxing. That's dumber than hell. And I still think it is, but uh, this one's a little bit unique in why we're going to do a little bit of an unboxing on it. But anyway, let me show you what I'm talking about. Rear bags. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. One of them is technically not a rear bag, but it's a front bag rest. This is the one I started with. Caldwell Dead Zero Bag. It's small. Uh... That's kind of a plus. Uh, it's easy to throw in a range bag. It's light, but you know, it's minimalistic. You can't do a whole lot of precision stuff with that. So toss that one aside. Next one. This is a leaky Caldwell tack driver. It's fairly heavy. I've got it filled with uh, cat litter and it's too heavy for the design. The handle's breaking off of it right here. And you can probably see cat litter. It's clean cat litter. It ain't dirty. I'm, I'm not that economical. And I also have the Caldwell front rest. That bag I've got filled with, uh, it's a plastic fill. Uh, I think uh, High Score or High Fill is the company that makes that stuff. It's nice and sturdy, but quite a bit lighter. This bag has been my go-to for a long time. It's a high score, it's about four and a half inches high. The leather on it is pretty slick. It's not too tight, not too loose right here in the rest. Um, but you can see, set that down right there. You can see that, you know, the bottom, the shape will shift a little bit depending on how much weight you're putting on it. One of the counters I've had to that is this board system. I've got four different boards here of different thicknesses, little handle cut in each one. And I would take these to the matches and depending on where we were set up, how high everything needed to be set, you know, it gave me a base for this bag and it would change the elevation of it. But again, that's not a great foundation. It's got shift in it and uh, not really where you want to be. Um, I have this Armageddon rear squeeze bag i like that a lot for you know if i'm shooting anything prs style or you know just hunting uh the squeeze bag is nice i've also got this armageddon game changer i got that uh really for a prs it's probably more of a front bag a rest bag because you're shooting on a barrier or whatever just throw it down uh, but it will function as a rear bag as well so that is the reference box. The box that caused me to go, hmm, should we do an unboxing video, even though I think it's dumber than hell? Yeah, we have to. I mean, we know what's in that box. We know it's a protector, Dr. Rear Bag, Rear, rear Rest, but that box is bleeding. It's bleeding sand. It's bleeding worse than that Caldwell tack driver bag was bleeding cat litter. I don't know if the thing has been shot, if it's been stabbed, if it's defective, or is it just the usual meticulous care that FedEx and UPS give to a package? I don't know. We're going to have to open it up and see. What I do know is all that sand leaking out, that can't be good. So I think what I'm going to have to do is go downstairs and get some plastic and We'll open it up on the plastic because I don't know if the sand is coming from the rear bag or if it's coming from the stabilizer bag, but uh, we got to figure it out. I hope I hope the thing's not trashed, but 
I'll get some plastic. I'll be right back. So, let's take a peek. This is what I found when I opened it up. I'm still not sure if the sand is coming from the rear bag or the stabilizer bag. Sure hope it's from the stabilizer bag, because that don't look like heavy sand to me. Well, instead of going downstairs and getting plastic, I just used some of this craft paper that I use for uh, quick and testing targets. It'll work just as well. Just want to keep this stuff out of the carpet. Um, so here's... in here. And there's one component. There's a packing slip. And here is the rest. Here is the rest. Yep, it's a protector uh, rear rest with a mat. Ah, that's where our leak is. That's why it's got so much sand. This was not closed up. So I'm going to take this sand and put it back in there and close that properly. Hopefully that'll, hopefully that'll fix the problem. I guess I'm kind of glad that we did the unboxing. You got to see what uh, was going on with the sand. I'm not real thrilled about that, that the sand was leaking out of the bag stabilizer. It's the first time I've ever had a bag stabilizer, and uh, so far I'm not very impressed with the stabilizer itself. We're gonna look at the bag, but uh, but yeah, that little thing cost me about 15 minutes getting uh, eh, probably 98, 99% of the sand that came out back into the stabilizer and cleaning it all up. What I couldn't get back into it. So anyway, let's look at this real quick. That's the bag stabilizer. And that is supposed to be for a handle bottom. And I thought that it was supposed to be big enough for this entire setup. Like I said, I've never used a bag stabilizer before, but to me, it looks like it's a little bit small. Uh, it's also supposed to be for a handle, but I guess you have to take sand out. I don't know. I'm going to call the folks at Protector tomorrow and ask them about the uh, stabilizer portion of it. Like I said, I'm not real thrilled with that. Um, the sand leaking, number one, and the way the... It's got a fill hole on both ends, which I'm not really sure why you want to put one on both ends. Because they don't really seal up that good. Um, maybe I'm not doing it right. Like I said, I hadn't used a bag stabilizer before. So, I talked to the folks at Protector about the uh, stabilizer bag. Uh, they said that they used to put only one fill hole on it. A lot of people complained because it, you know, this is not a real big channel in here. It took a lot to fill it. So, they started putting two on. Uh, they apologized for the things being open and the sand leaking out. And uh, they said that. It is the right size for the doctor rear bag. Uh, said that the bag is supposed to set up on the uh, sand sides here so you can adjust it. Um, like I said, I've never used a stabilizer bag before, so it was all new to me. The regular stabilizer bag is a little bit smaller. Now, what I did do to take care of the leakage problem on one end, I hot glued the end together and got it in there. Absolutely no, no leakage now. In my mind, I think I'll only ever need to take out any sand or add any sand via one fill port. And on that one, I just took some black duct, duct tape and tape it shut. So no more leakage problems. That's all fixed. Let's take a quick look at the bag. So this is a Dr. Rear bag, um, mid length on the ears, three quarter inch, this is for my Ruger Precision Rifle. Uh, my bag rider on that is seven eighths of an inch. I didn't want it to be too loose in here. We'll take a look and see how the rifle fits in this. I'm anxious to try it for sure. Um, it's got the slick material in it and I had it done with the heavy sand. They use chromite sand, um, not quite as heavy as the zircon or zirconium sand, but also not as hard to find. 
I was a little bit worried when we unboxed it because it's like, hmm, the thing is not that heavy. I mean, it's heavy, but I didn't think it's as heavy as it's supposed to be. I thought, did they make a mistake on that? No, I went and weighed it. It's 19 pounds. Uh, I think they advertise it as supposed to be like 19.7 or 19.5, but yeah, it's good and heavy. Uh, been working out a lot more lately. Had a little health thing go on uh, a while back, and uh, if you notice, my gut's a little bigger, so I wasn't able to work out for a while, getting back into it now, but when I picked it up, I was just like, hmm, that doesn't really feel like 20 pounds, but it is, it's 19. Overall impressions with this, um, overall impressions with the bag itself, um, pretty favorable so far. I, I have a little bit of concern about this uh, leather covering on the bottom. I don't think if it were to tear, I don't think it's going to leak under there. Um, the bag is stuffed pretty full. So yeah, they build a really quality product. Um, this bottom is, it looks like it would be wood, but it's not. It's layers of leather. It's got a little bit of give to it. Um, I don't know that wood would be better. Probably be harder to adhere to. They can stitch it down that way. You can see right here that, that the bag itself is stitched down. So stitching down on wood probably wouldn't work too well. Um, and it's, let's do a quick measurement on it. They advertise it as eight inches by six inches. And if you go on the base, the base is six inches wide. And it is, on the bag portion, it's a good eight inches long, uh, back to the edge of the handle, uh, 11 inches. Now, if you look at where it juts out over the bag, it's probably close to six and a half. Now, Protector's been around for a long time. I think a lot of people find their products very good. The reason I bought it is when I did the uh, some ladder testing for my 6.5, I borrowed uh, my buddy Steve's, but his was the regular one, and it was not big enough for me that I wanted. I wanted something bigger, and I wanted this flat top, and you'll see why uh, with the way I've got my Ruger Precision rifle set up. <clears throat> and I wanted it to be nice and heavy. I looked at the SEBs. The SEB bags are really good, and I really didn't want something as big as their Monster, but their regular bags, uh, they ship them empty. And I didn't want to fool with having to find heavy sand and then filling it myself. So that's the reason I went with the Protector. They were really good folks to work with. They had to build this bag special for me. Uh, yeah, they're sold all over Midway, Mid-South and everything, but finding the one that you specifically want to fit your rifle may be a little bit of an issue, but you know, this thing was ordered and shipped and probably, I probably got it in less than a week or right at a week from when I ordered it. So pretty happy about that and really anxious to try it out. So I'll get the rifle and uh, we'll throw it in there and take a little look at it and see what we think there. So this is my current F-Class open setup. It's a Ruger Precision Rifle in 6.5 Creedmoor. I've got an EC tuner on the front of it, AccuTac bipod. Uh, with the sled feet, I run that on a small sheet of a small piece of plywood so it slides real well and doesn't hang up in the grass. Trigicon 10 mile 5 to 50 scope. Um, and there is the Protector Doctor rear bag um, flat top with the stabilizer on it. The rear bag rider that I've got here. Uh, I can adjust the back of the rifle up and down with that much better than trying to squeeze a bag. Um, I'm not going to tell you what brand that is right now uh, or where I got it. Uh, the owner of the company contacted me and asked me if I would do a review on that. So we'll do a review on that here down the road. Anyway, you can see how well the rear bag rider rides in this uh, Protector Dr. Rear Bag. The rear bag rider is actually 7 eighths of an inch wide. It rides really well in that 3 quarter inch channel. Gives it just enough snugging to not move, but enough uh, slickness here that it will move backwards. Another thing I specified on that was I wanted the ears to be four and a half inches long. It's not the entire length of the rear bag rider, but it's uh, you know a good 90% of it. It's plenty enough, and I can run it back here. Let me show you. I can run it back this far and not be into the adjustment wheel of the rear bag rider. And I also specified that the ears uh, to be two inches tall, not the normal two and a half. 
you can get them as short as one and a half. Again, I did not want the ears in any way to be able to interfere with this uh, elevation adjustment wheel or these little knurlings that you have here to adjust the uh, Ruger Precision stock. So, am I satisfied with the Dr. Rear Bag flat top protect from Protector so far? Yeah, really, really satisfied with it. Like I said, I've not had a chance to take it out to the range yet. This thing is nice and sturdy. The heavy sand in it's not going to shift around. And uh, I think it's going to serve me real well. That Ruger Precision, yeah, that thing is shooting sub-quarter MOA. Uh, I've got it down in the 0 .18, 0 0.19 range. Um, it's going to serve me well for probably another year until I'm shooting... Uh, mid to high master high master scores then uh, then i'll think about getting a truly purpose-built dedicated f-class rifle uh, really like that discipline though well, like i said i shoot a lot of disciplines i shoot uh, f-class open mid and long range i shoot service rifle uh nra high power i shoot idpa and uspsa and that's about all i can do Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you got a little bit of information about uh, rear bags. Like I said before, just like any other piece of equipment, you need to identify your need or the purpose of why you're getting it and establish your budget and then go shop for something that fits both of those uh, criteria. I probably left something out of the video that somebody wanted me to cover, but uh, if so, just post your question down below and uh, I'll be glad to answer it if I can. In the meantime, please like subscribe and uh, share the videos and uh, remember kids x's win matches keep the greasy side down y'all have a good one